Hello and welcome Wait, to. Ready. Oh my gosh! <laughs> now I'm ready. You piece of poop. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you positive? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Destination Unknown. I am Josh Elliott here with Blake, the masterpiece uh, Connor. Don't hate me, Chris Hawkins. I didn't mean to steal your nickname. Um, but that is, uh, <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate the compliment, um, being yeah. called a masterpiece. That's wonderful. Um, this is destination unknown. You might've already said that, but I was so caught up in the compliment that <laughs> I got a little teary eyed. It's crazy. So guys, um, just a reminder, if you have not yet signed up for the Mario sunshine newsletter, you can't see me Blake, but I'm do totally it. doing the Trump hands right now. You gotta do it. <laughs> you, got you just gotta do it. <laughs> Yeah, believe me, but uh, sign up you get all kinds letter. of cool updates on there and it is completely free to sign up for. And we want you to sign up for it. So do that yeah. if you are at all interested. And Mario uh, Sunshine, the musical at Gmail dot com. Yes, that is the email address. Uh, just send us an email saying, hey, send me things and we will do just that. <laughs> um, yeah. And speaking of Mario Sunshine, uh, we have some. Uh, viewer submitted questions that are just we figured we'd answer begging that. to be answered. <laughs> so are you down for that, my boy? I absolutely am. Let's do it. OK, the first you're one to read in... them to me. I don't have the telepathic vision to see through the phone. See, you're was... back here on my oh, phone. My I'm Lord. looking into a lens. And so I'm getting real meta here. Just read the read the question to me. Oh, I was going to before you went on that weird little. <laughs> That weird little journey just you just went on. Just go. <laughs> All right. We're not going to preface it anymore. We're going to read the questions now. But <laughs> no explanation. Yeah. OK, so completely unprompted. We're just going to answer some questions and we're not going to yeah, talk totally, about it. Anymore. Totally. No context. We're not we're not going to discuss discussing these questions any longer. No <laughs> yeah. more. Yeah. We're you know what's happening. We know what's happening. So we're going to answer the questions right now. All right. Here we go. <laughs> So the first one and the one that I want to get out of the way, because it's not that I, it's a bad question. I, <laughs> I just I, OK, so we've had a lot of requests to do Luigi's mm. Mansion Dark Moon, the musical or Luigi's Mansion three, the musical or like Mario Brothers, like partners in time or whatever that game for the yeah. DS was called. Uh, all these musical suggestions and while for one, we're flattered that you want that kind of content from us, uh, it is very cool that you're requesting that kind of stuff. But uh, we have a current project, uh, Mario Sunshine. If you don't know, I don't know mm -hmm. how you don't know. Um, yeah, if you follow our channel at all, we've just been blasting it everywhere. <laughs> but that <laughs> oversaturating the market that, with posts. That's the project that we're currently working on. And. While there could be another Mario musical in the future, uh, that's our focus for now. Um, Blake, did you mm. want to say some things about that? But um, I'm just, you know, it's not that it's a bad request. I think logically speaking, it makes sense because Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon was the sequel to Luigi's Mansion. But I'm just surprised at how many people want a Luigi's Mansion The Dark Moon musical yeah. because it just strikes me as it would be the same thing again i mean isn't that what the game was yeah <laughs> kind of the same thing again <laughs> yeah and i mean if you requested that like i get it because like you want a sequel yeah. you want a sequel to the thing we did before but at the and same you're gonna get at the same time it's like there's so much other stuff in the mario universe that we would rather explore like luigi's mansion one Warrior of our favorite Wear. games ever and mario sunshine another incredible game from our childhood that uh that we're gonna flesh out and uh make into a musical for you guys and we're flattered that you want all these things. But um, for now, we're just we chose sunshine. That's the route we're going. And uh, <laughs> anything else is basically Josh is beating no around the now. bush to say we're not doing the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> we're not it's doing okay. another you're, Luigi's Mansion musical. I'm sorry. You're being Luigi very will kind. be we, in things in the future. You don't have to worry like about the that. Credits. In Avengers, but. where it said Thanos will return, it's like Luigi will return, but in a different capacity. 
Yeah, we're not going to re-release <laughs> Luigi's Mansion. We're going to put him in other things. So well, we'll we'll reskin it slightly. We'll change a few of the scenes and then we'll post it. And yeah. it, it'll say Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, the musical. And everybody's yeah, so, gonna freak out. And then so every us. every Halloween from now until uh, we die, <laughs> we're going to re-release a slightly different Luigi's Mansion and call it something else. You know, that's I'm, not true. I don't, know how. I don't know why we're going down. <laughs> we're just going to confuse people I don't know now. How Luigi's Mansion three. Like, I just don't I don't know how different it's going to be either. How would we have like, I, <laughs> how are we going to make a musical for a game we haven't played yet? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, like the game itself. I'm not talking yeah. about a musical. Like, I mean, I don't know how the game is going to be different than the other two. I digress. Let's move I mean, to the next question. I'm excited for it. But <laughs> yeah. So yeah. thank you for suggesting things. Uh, we got what we're doing for now. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, second one. Easy one. When are you re- going to release the Mario Sunshine musical? And drum roll. <laughs> next year. You take it away, Josh. Yeah. Next <laughs> we year. Don't wanna, we don't want to promise. We don't want to promise a specific time of year. Uh, just oh, because last time we did that. It worked out so well. <laughs> we don't want to set us <laughs> ourselves up for failure. And uh <laughs> we we promised Halloween for Luigi's Mansion and we pulled it off. But oh, my gosh, we, we were stressed Barely. out for the entire time. Barely. We cranked that thing out just just in the nick of time. Yeah, but like uh, I, I believe I received the finished songs from Mark, which he was working like a dog. Yes. But I received like those finished songs like three days before Halloween. <laughs> Like I had the album, I heard the songs for the first time three days before it was set to go out. Like that's yeah. intense. <laughs> yeah. And so we we are planning on you know, unless something crazy happens, but uh, expect that next year. Um, we don't want to promise a certain time just because we don't want to disappoint yeah. you guys if that doesn't happen. So uh, look for and a if you're 2020 to the newsletter. Release. You'll have more updates, too. Yeah, you'll have more updates if you're subscribed to the newsletter about when this is going to happen. You'll probably be more in the know than anybody else out. there. Yeah, absolutely. So expect that 2020 as far as specifics will not go there yet. Um, mm. And the last question, uh, well, it's kind of a two parter, but the f- the first part was, why didn't you guys make Madame Clairvoya a ghost like in the real game? So this is a question from Luigi's Mansion itself. Um, yeah. And then a more broad question. Um, how did you come to human appearances for Bowser and King Boo? So like, yeah. Uh, and I feel like those questions go together somewhat. But um, I can start and you can oh, take sure. the reins if you want. Sure. Oh, here. Um, it, sorry. During the middle of your question, I was looking around like a madman because I have a little um, super mushroom stress ball that I was squeezing earlier and I lost it. And I don't know what happened to it, but I just dropped it on the floor. That was totally unnecessary. You didn't need to know that. Continue. <laughs> OK, so um, <laughs> leading up to Luigi's Mansion, the musical, um, I was, you know, toying around with a lot of different ideas with like how the character should look. And we ultimately decided that Bowser was going to look horrible if we tried to make him look like he does in the games. So Mm -hmm. that was, I think, the primary reason for taking the characters in kind of a human appearance route, Um, just because it saved us a lot of headaches. And also, like, I think it's fun. Like, I like like the adaptation. I like the way Bowser looks uh, in our in our little universe here. And then for King Boo and Madame Clairvoya, um, King Boo also obviously like is way more human in appearance than he was in the game. Like in the game, he's just a little mm-hmm. circle guy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> little round boy, <laughs> a little circle boy. But um, we didn't know how to make him look like that. I mean, we probably could have, but uh, well, I mean, and we too, we just wanted to keep it like human you know like even yeah. like in other musicals like uh, if you've ever seen shrek the musical it's like donkey i mean he looks like a donkey in shrek the musical but it's still just a guy in uh, like a donkey outfit yeah. you know it's like it's you have to humanize them in some form because like otherwise you have like we're not to the point where we can just make totally cg characters yeah like if we were we would well i don't know what we'd be doing necessarily but like we'd be doing a whole lot more um whereas 
like we just wanted to make this like relatable in a sense of like you can connect with King Boo no matter how evil and deep his voice is. Yeah. Yeah, and like we had already made Bowser human, so the consistency there, uh, we just really wanted to we just really wanted to keep. And uh as far as Madame Clairvoya, uh she <laughs> in our eyes was a ghost, but I I remember talking about this with you, Blake, and ultimately yeah. I don't know who pitched it. I think maybe I did, but I, I don't remember. Um, we wanted to leave the main cast um, uh, human. human like we didn't want to green screen them and make them look like transparent and ghostly. Um, it would have been a lot of extra work too. to. Like, yeah, I mean, just just being honest, like being transparent with like what we were working with, making King Boo transparent is something that we probably could have done, but it would have added so much time. Yeah, because like he interacts with Luigi in so many scenes, but like it would have been. Tough. But also like. It was just a stylistic choice. Like we wanted to differentiate the main cast from the extras. Um, yeah. If you know what I mean there. Uh, so in short, we could have made them ghosts uh, in our mind. Well, we they are still to. ghosts, but they we just wanted them to look different. And if we did that in a way that you didn't like, I apologize. We could have done a lot of things in Luigi's Mansion better. But I digress. We are yeah. where we are. We shot it in four days. We, we shot, shot the whole thing in four days. We shot it in four days. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's a little over 11 minutes a day um, of final runtime. Um, but that that leads us to to the thought that um, there are a lot of non-human characters we're going to have to adapt. Yes. In Super Mario Sunshine, the musical. Yeah. Um, like. I mean, Josh, you've you've had some character designs going already, right? Are, yes. are there any soft soft <laughs> launches you wanna you wanna throw out there? Sure. What characters we I might mean, expect to see in Super Mario Sunshine the Musical? Yeah, I'll leave that up to you. You're writing it. Yeah, I mean, I will. I'll tell you the characters that you can expect to see. Um, as far as um specifics on what they're going to look like, I'll leave that for a secret for now. But um, interpretation. Yeah, you can uh, you can expect to see the classics, uh, the mini bosses, Wiggler, um, mm. Blooper. Um, you can expect to see the return of King Boo uh, in a small Ooh. in a small role. But uh, you mm. can expect He's not to see steal him. the show like he did last time. Yeah. And uh, of course, everybody's favorite piranha plant, Petey. Um, snubbed mm, for Smash. Don't even tell me that you were excited about Piranha Plant. I know we all like him now, <laughs> but it should have been Petey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're all going to be in it. Um, and all of them will will have a human appearance outside of Peter Piranha. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, yeah. If, if any of you out there know how to make uh, really cool like mascot uh, like costumes, uh, hit us up because we could use your help. But yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. But so, yeah, expect those characters. Um, expect that's human just, interpretation. That's like borderline well. furry, man. Get <laughs> building a building a PD. I mean, if somebody outfit. knows what they're doing and they want to get a hold of me, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will put aside my reservations <laughs> about that lifestyle for assistance. <laughs> All right, so that's I don't enough. Even know if I can say that, that's enough. Luigi's Mansion and Sunshine talk, I think. Uh, so, Blake, I believe you had something you wanted to talk about. Uh, yes, we talked about uh, it briefly the other day, but um, there, so there was something um, you're familiar with uh, with Corridor Digital. Oh correct? yes, oh yes. And of if course, any of you listening aren't, uh, they're a better them. version of our channel. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot better. <laughs> I, I love them so much. They inspired me from the time I was I was very young on YouTube. I'm sure you're familiar with some of their videos. Even if you're not familiar with the name, you've seen some of their work. It's just too it's too big. Well, recently they made a video called Keanu Reeves Stops a Robbery. And it is a it's a parody video of um well it's Keanu Reeves, um, but it's like an actor. It's an actor portraying Keanu Reeves, but they used this technology called deep fake. And they put Keanu Reeves' face on him, and they had somebody impersonate his voice, and it looks just like 
Keanu Reeves. It's it's scary because it's leading. It's a very funny and entertaining video. Like they're playing it up like the meme that Keanu Reeves is just so nice. He stops a robbery and he does all of these things in the video that are super funny. But it almost leads you to wonder what this means for the future of like crime. Because yeah. if they can make a video that convincingly makes it appear as though Keanu Reeves stopped the crime, like even though they acknowledge that it's fake, it's like what's stopping people from faking crimes in the future, using other people's faces in videos? Like what do you think are the, the moral implications of that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of gray area um, in the morality of this like technology. Um, yeah. It... it <laughs> it's one of those things that, first of all, I can't even believe exists like yeah, that like kind of technology. Um, but it's a reality and it's something that uh, <laughs> that is going to have to be, you know, discussed and uh, and figured out by uh, whoever's, you know, making laws and uh, that kind of things, because like privacy laws are going to be very like serious about this kind of thing. Because oh, I understand sure. because that like, like actors and things like that have a lot of protection to their likeness. So I couldn't mm-hmm. I don't I don't think any kind of shady business will come about like an actor appearing in like a f- like a film that they weren't actually in. But as far as like YouTube, clearly it's already been done. So well, what about what about um, the revival of actors like um, what was it in Rogue One? Yeah, was it? Tarkin Mm -hmm. they just that guy's dead he's been dead for years and they recreated his face digitally like who gave them the right like is it his his state his family yeah I mean I'm assuming it's his family or like something that he signed in a contract you know years and years and years ago but I don't even know how they could have anticipated having some kind of technology like that no like it just seems like so morally like um well you talked about we talked about Robin Williams the yeah. other day. Rest in peace. Love the guy. Love love his performances. But, I mean, he's he's gone now. And we've talked about the morality of what if 25, 30 years from now, they, like, we're sitting, like, at home watching TV when an ad for a Robin Williams movie comes on. Because yeah. it is entirely possible. It is entirely possible. Like, maybe implausible, but possible. Like, think about that, like the revival of just dead actors from here on out. Like, that is something that can happen. We can see the same faces over and over again. Like, even things like in Captain Marvel, they made Samuel L. Jackson young. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Yeah, and they did a that's crazy weird. good job of it, too. Like, yeah. he looked very young. Like, I'm going to make a prediction right here on the podcast. Are you ready? Tell me. Yes. I think that within the next five years... And this this may be too bold, but I think that we are going to see Marilyn Monroe in a new movie. I think it's going to happen. I, yeah, I bet I bet they, they come out with when this stuff gets perfect, like when this stuff is like, yeah, perfected, when they like when, when they perfected like this technology accessible, when this technology is and it's like very close, it's very close. You look at Paul Walker and yeah, uh, Furious Seven. Like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, even I know this from Corridor Digital did another video. They've done a lot of stuff on deep fake because they're learning it in their like uh, CGI art or VFX artists react to bad CGI and good CGI. They talk about the Paul Walker stuff and just how photorealistic it is. I have no doubt in my mind that maybe a, an auto or not auto, but a, a biographical story about Marilyn Monroe would come out and it would look exactly like her. Yeah, because they they use her face to sell like T-shirts and yeah. memorabilia. And like, it's crazy. Like, think about like monetizing on that for like years. Like, how much money do you think Michael Jackson makes every year? Like, I'm sure Post there's mortem. a statistic out yeah. there. Post mortem, yeah. And it just goes to his family or like whoever. Man. Yeah, that he makes more than I ever will, <laughs> and he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of gray area like in this subject. And I don't really know what will be the norm in the future and what will be legal and what won't be. Uh, But it's kind of a scary thought. There was a man. It's in my media law book over there. They I'm I'm disappointing Barry Umansky right now. He was my media law professor and he's not a man I want to disappoint. But I forget the name of the case. There was a landmark case about 
the right to publish one's likeness. And it started because a young girl's photo had been taken and they were using her image to sell flour. It was on like flour sacks or something like that. And one day she was in the store and she saw her face was being used without her consent. Like she'd never signed on for this. She was not being paid for that. And she sued like, hey, I don't want my face on this. And like she won. And that was like the, well, okay, now I'm saying this. And it's like, I'm thinking back to my media law class. It's like, this has been a while ago. I, I don't want to spread misinformation here, but I don't feel like I'm smart enough to do a podcast sometimes, Josh. Like I have these big ideas, but I have nothing to reference from. <laughs> well, if you look back on all of our podcasts in the past, we just like, we'll talk about some crazy thing we heard about. We're like, <laughs> well, I could have butchered that and don't take my word for yeah. it. But <laughs> yeah, like most of the time when people like do stuff like this, they're spreading information like, yeah, look it up. It's a fact. Me, I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I'm pretty sure I recounted that story correctly. We just talk about things but that we know. think are cool and just say what we think we know and we could be wrong. <laughs> Our opinion becomes history, man. <laughs> well, it'd be easier if I had... We just had access to good internet. Like I've got pretty much dial-up speed over here. So if I wanted to confirm that fact, I'd have to use my mobile hotspot on my phone, connect it here, and then spend five minutes waiting for the page to load. So <laughs> I think you're okay with the uncertainty of that information. Look it up yourself. Yeah, if you're any, if you're like interested enough in anything we talk about, I feel like you can look it up. And yeah, fact please check don't. Us. Please don't reference me. Like if you're in a heated argument with someone, um, and you quote. Uh, Blake or Josh from Destination Unknown. Like, well, they said this. Well, first of all, that was your first mistake. Yeah, you were a fool you, for you doing assumed that. I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> I love that that would carry weight in an argument. It's like, well, Blake Connor said. <laughs> They're like, They're like who's who? Blake Connor? Who is that? <laughs> uh, he's a YouTuber, and in his podcast, he said this. Hey, listen, admit it. You've Googled yourself. Come on. <laughs> yeah, nothing comes up. It. No, yeah, uh, <laughs> nothing comes up for me either. Heck, even our YouTube channel name, the only thing that comes dude, up are Christian movies. Dude, uh, so if you Google my name, and I'm going to do it right now, but so I'm going to Google my name, Josh Elliott, and you have to put in the, the town or nothing will come up. <laughs> um, it'll just be a sportscaster otherwise. But if you search Josh Elliott, Bedford, Indiana, um, you will find a picture and I, let me let me let me locate it. But dang it, I don't think it's the case anymore. But used to, if you would Google my name, oh, you would find a picture of my mom, which I think is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you look up my name, um, one of the first few photos that pops up is MySpace, my nice. old MySpace photo. And it's not any it's not available anywhere else online. My MySpace profile, like all of that data is like gone, like. They revamped MySpace, my profile or whatever. I could never access the page as it was ever again. But somehow that data is like still archived. It's like there's no way you can delete something yeah. once it's out there. You know what I mean? You send it and it's like forever. Here is your digital. Yeah, that's imprint. why you have to. Like the image is available it, somewhere. You got to be careful with what you post because it's out there. You really do. <laughs> Dude, I like I find it so I find it so weird just how openly some people post on social media about like their lives and their problems. Yeah. Or, like, um, I get friend requests from sometimes from people that I like idly know, and maybe I'll accept that, and like I'll know immediately. It's like mm, you're a problem child. Like I don't want to <laughs> participate in what yeah, you're spewing. Yeah, for sure. Like all the the mud you're slinging, I want no part of it. It's like when people call other people, but especially when people like call other people by name. Like, I don't think it's good to be passive aggressive. I mean, really ever <laughs> like passive aggression is just like not the way to accomplish things. But at the same time, being really forward about it on social media too, and just like yeah. calling people out and adding them. It's like, I also think that's a great, like, I mean, why do you have to do that? At why the end of the, the day, need? that's just immaturity because like, if you have, if you have it an is. issue like, with another person, like you bring that up with them and you bring it up either in person mm -hmm. or like give them a phone call or something and say, like, hey, man, I've I've had this issue with you and like, let's talk through it. Like, just if you don't respect the relationship enough to like actually talk yeah. to them about it, like, why are you investing time in yeah. something like that? Like ranting about somebody on the Facebook is not going to make you feel better about things. 
The only exception I could see is like if you went into business with somebody, and maybe yeah. like they didn't pay you or something like that, and like you're warning other people not to do business with them. Like so, you're like not necessarily slandering them. It's like you're because you can't be in trouble yeah. if you're telling the truth. You're like this person has not paid me, therefore I mean, do not work. With that's them. and even then, that's I think a that would different. Be, scenario though that's like it's a different situation it's a different scenario it's not just yeah. like mudslinging it's like hey i'm warning you this person's shady you know like don't don't work with them that sort of thing um but just like the mudslinging man it's like if i got on i try to erase people yeah. like that from my feed like i just yeah. can't tolerate it like i used to be like well i know them or like i'm friends with them and now it's like indiscriminate it's like i cut people out of my life that Sometimes or even like acquaintances or like people that I knew or I used to hang out with because it's yeah. like, I just don't, I don't agree I with mean, you anymore. I mean, what is, you know, what is like the, the saying? Time. It's like, you are the five people you surround yourself with, like the five closest people. Yeah. You are, you yeah. are the sum, you are the sum of the five people you spend yeah, the most time with. And I mean, with, if you have like basically. acquaintances on Facebook or like in life that are just negative and don't have like, there's nothing positive being gained from the relationship. Like, I mean, if you're close with them, that's one thing. But if it's just an acquaintance, like, there's no need to, there's no need to stick, like, stick with that. Like, cut those, cut those people out, no. man. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Josh, I thought of, uh, I thought of something else that I wanted to talk about. And this is, it's just, it's a really silly question. I'm ready. And it makes me, it makes me <laughs> giggle just thinking about it. Okay, so there comes a point in time. I'm gonna paint you a f- picture. There comes a point in time. Like this is, like this is in a you. crisis. <laughs> when a person realizes they have to act, that is the monologue from the beginning of our first. You're gonna have film to play it. You're gonna have to school. play I it. I did it, and I. Did. <sighs> I know. <laughs> when we make these references, it's like it's funny, but then I think, man, now I'm gonna have to dig through an old clip so people understand there what we're talking about. Comes a point in time, about. in a um, crisis. There comes a point in time. A crisis when a person realizes they have to act. During the crisis, in total societal meltdown, the fragile balance of human nature will degrade, and people will show you who they really are. Anyway, there comes a point in time in a young man's life when he's with uh, with with a lady for long enough, you know, with with a girl. With a girl, with a or girl with guy, short sure, guy, sure. and he realizes something. He's got this deep-seated feeling in his stomach. Maybe you're sitting watching a movie. Maybe you're in the car. Maybe you're at dinner. I know where this is going. But it strikes, and you know what I'm talking about. You feel that gurgle in your stomach, and you realize you're full Those of tummy gas. rumbles. You're full of gas. You gotta release it, but you have to make <laughs> a decision right here and now. Are you comfortable enough? with this person that you can just rip it, that you can just pull the cord on that baby, let it go. Or do you wait? Do you go into another room? Do you hide what God intended for all of us to fart? <laughs> so Josh, that is, are you? that is go. a loaded question because you, uh, you, you said you gave a lot of different scenarios mm. where like, if, if a significant other and I were, out to dinner like in a public <laughs> setting i don't think it is ever the <laughs> appropriate right. to let one rip but you're talking about a level of comfort like at what a stage in a relationship like at what point in your relationship <laughs> do you feel like because i think it's weird if like couples don't i think in front of each other i just like, think that it's once you're out of the stage of infatuation you know mm. what I mean? Like the honeymoon yeah. phase of a relationship. Yeah. It's like once you get past that, I think all bets are off. But yeah. then like Pandora's box is opened at that point. Yeah. First time <laughs> but, you hear a booty quack like a duck, it's over. <laughs> but well, it's, it, yeah, <laughs> I, th- I, I think I think I like that answer. Like once you're out of the honeymoon <laughs> phase, like like quack away. Booty quack all you want. Sit on all the frogs you want to. It's. <laughs> <clears throat> this started I mean, to uh, be f- this, <laughs> never mind you, sorry you you talk well this this question started because this morning i got a text from ty and um he was talking about something and i don't know how it started but he goes do you fart in front of rachel and this is a girl that i've dated for a year and a half i was like do i fart on this girl it's like man 
I'd give her a Dutch oven if I could. Good Lord. It's been a year and a half. Like, I am so comfortable with this person. I feel like what I just said was an admission of something dark and sinister and disgusting. So I won't apologize <laughs> because it came out. But just know that about me now. <laughs> you got a squeaky chair over there, Blake. I do. Do you hear it? Do you hear me rocking back? And oh, it's because my phone is like it's like rocking on you, basically. Yeah, I've, oh, my phone I've heard you the squeaking floor. and squacking this whole this whole podcast. My phone fell on the floor. How did it get down there? I don't know. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So, Blake, I recently I, I did something yesterday and I'd like to talk a little bit about it. Are Go you ahead. down? Go right ahead. Floor is yours. So yesterday I went to see a film in the theaters. Um, a little a little known uh, cinematic experience called The Lion King. Have you heard of it? No. Well, anyway, that's that's beside the point, because while I'm not here to talk about the movie, because we totally could, um, I'll wait to see if Blake sees it at some point or you know, if you really want to know what I think about it, you can ask me. But the thing I wanted to talk about was in that theater, there were tons of children, which of makes course. sense, right? It makes sense. It's yeah. rated G. It's a Disney movie. Like it's a family like experience. It's a family. Wait, was, atmosphere. The or- was the original one even rated G? I think so, dude. Like, but anyway, 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 it is rated G. I know that for I know that for sure. But um, so I'm in this movie and these these children's are are all around these little these little mini adult machines Um, and and boy, oh boy, Blake, was that one of the most unpleasant movie experiences I have ever had, because first of all, the child sitting next to me, this little girl started talking to her grandma during the movie and she was like (laughs) she would say things like she'd say things like is it almost over and the movie's like 20 it's like 20 minutes into the movie and then she'll start singing along with the songs and then she'll uh she'll start making predictions like during the movie and all these things (laughs) and like babies are crying over here and like Kids are talking over here and parents are yelling at their kids and all these and she's things. She's not reached the age where you can just like <laughs> lean over and tell her to shut her yapper. You know, that's that's and socially unacceptable behavior. Like, what do you think the etiquette is in a movie theater? Like, as far as children is concerned, like I when you have kids one day, what age are you going to finally take them to the movie theater? And before you take them in, like, are you going to have a stern talking to them? Because I think I will. Oh, absolutely. Listen, there's a there's a level of respect. Like I just I'd be embarrassed. I couldn't yeah. be that parent. It's like, first of all, I'm I'm such a movie snob anyway, and like I'll just I'll openly admit that. It's like Yeah. I, same. Uh, like I like, think I anybody want, that knows us knows that. Yeah, to be true. they know that we're they know that we're obnoxious about it. And I'm just I'm just being transparent about that. So it's like there's a lot of movies that I probably won't want to see. It's like I'm probably going to wait to the point where if they're interested in a movie, if they're re- if they really wanted to go. I would take them. But if they don't express that interest on their own accord, I'm going to wait until the movies they want to watch and the movies I want to watch overlap interests. Because yeah. when we go, it's like I I would like to make sure that they behave. And if they don't behave, the treatment is going to be we're going to leave. Like we bought the yeah. ticket and we're going to leave. It's like if you start here's crying the or if thi- you start. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like during this entire like movie, all these things are happening around me. And not once was I irritated at the kids. They can't. I mean, it's they're like kids. they're children. Like they're yeah. going to talk like they're going to like do these things. If you let them like the whole time, like I'm just looking at all these parents and grandparents. And it's like, come on, like control your child. <laughs> like, yeah. first of all, if your child is not capable of being quiet, like. Maybe the movie theater isn't the place to go. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I get it. Like, they're excited to see the movie. They want to experience it. And at the end of the day, The Lion's King is a kid's movie. Maybe like you're not. I, I, don't, mean, think, it's certainly, I don't think it's fair to even categorize movies as like 
kids movies or adult movies yeah. because like all of these movies have like deep themes like the original lion king like i watched the animated version just the other day and to think that it's rated g like dude that's kind of hardcore like some hardcore stuff yeah. happens in the lion king. disney in general like pe- people die in disney movies scar gets <laughs> eaten by hyenas S- and it's like scar and he does in this new one too it's and scary. it's more yeah and like I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just think that like it's just control your kids, man. Just control <laughs> your children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we both I saw think... a movie recently that I would like to discuss. Spider-Man down. Far From Home is what Spider-Man you're Far From Home. Spider-Man uh, Home from Home. If any far. of you listening have not watched Spider-Man Far From Home yet, uh, we will have timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip ahead and avoid potential spoilers. Yeah, spoilers um, inbound. I wouldn't recommend just skipping randomly ahead in the video. I would like find the timestamp and actually go to a specific time. So spoilers you're are coming. Spoilers are coming. Click away. We have Click warned away. you. Click it away. is not our fault if okay. <laughs> if we spoil things. What if we set the timestamp to the most spoilerific part? We won't do that. I'm sorry. Don't don't think <laughs> that we will. But cruel. <laughs> that's cool. Don't think that we will. We won't do that. All right, we're gonna um, do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoyed it. I thought yeah. the movie was so. I went in thinking that I could not be invested in another Marvel movie after Avengers Endgame yeah, because I'm just sure. so tired of it. But it's like I don't know why I thought that because if the studio could make me feel so much with Avengers Endgame. Why would I not like the next thing that they made? Like, yeah, obviously why, it was give going up, to be good. why give up on it? Why give up I, after a classic, you know? Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I like I'd stuck through the MCU highs and lows from beginning to end game. Huh? <laughs> huh? But but after end game, I, I really thought it's like, you know, I've given this franchise, this universe so many years of my life, so much of my money and like all these things. And it's not that I was going to not ever go see a Marvel movie again, because like I was going to see Spider-Man regardless. And I was going to pick and choose Marvel movies that interested me. But but they they just they've they've built such an incredible world and all of the movies play into this world and characters overlap in really cool ways and things in some movies affect like other movies. And it's just so deep and rich and after watching Spider-Man, they've got me hooked again. Tom Spider-Man, is Spider-Man, Spider-Man Far Spider-Man. From Home. Oh, that's not he even is, up for debate. That's is, not even up for debate. He is the Spider-Man to me. It used to be, like, even Same. up until Homecoming, it was, like, still Tobey Maguire. But then I went back through and yep. I watched the old Spider-Man movies. And I was like, nope, I'm sorry. Hand the crown over, buddy. It's, there <laughs> yeah, is a I new mean, king. I love, I love me some Spider-Man too. But, Spider-Man 2 is great. Spider-Man 3 but, was um, a Oh, that's not even a movie that really fire. exists. Spider-Man <laughs> 1 was slightly above that. It was like a, it was kind of a hot garbage fire. Spider-Man 1 was yet. good at the time, but it just doesn't hold up. No, it doesn't age well. Peter like The Green Goblin is great. He looks cheesy, but But like, I like it. I the, like it. The acting is great. Willem Dafoe was fantastic. The movie overall just doesn't doesn't hold up. Um but it, it's but just a thing. Far where, from like, home. I'm sorry if you wanted to in, make another point. No, I was going to say in Far From Home, this is, I guess this is, well, it's a new point. Everybody in Far From Home actually looks like a high schooler. Whereas yeah. in in both The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 and Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, all the high schoolers look like they're 35 because they are. Yeah. Like that's how old the actors were that they cast. <laughs> yeah Andrew Garfield so, was like 30 when he played in yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man Peter Parker is supposed to be like this nerdy kid and in, like in The Amazing Spider-Man movies like dude the dude looks like a model it's like <laughs> and and you know that's not saying anything bad about Tom Holland because the man is very attractive yeah but, but he, like he, Andrew he Garfield like are you kid. kidding me <laughs> Tom Holland plays a very good awkward kid. Like, I feel like he's so not oh, awkward, yeah. but he plays the role so well. Yeah, for for sure. Um, there's just so much heart in these Spider-Man movies. Like, for one, I think it's by far the most, like, the most accurate depiction of Spider-Man that we yeah. have, like, in, in a live-action movie. 
Um, I think Tom Holland does an incredible job of capturing both Peter Parker and Spider-Man like very, very well. Yeah. And and I'm just excited, man, because mm-hmm. I think that and I'll I'll make this prediction here, too. But I think Tom Holland is going to be Spider-Man for a long time. Like, oh, yeah. I think it's going to be the first time that we see Spider-Man go through different stages of life. Like, I think we're going to have Tom Holland as Peter Parker, like through high school, through college and maybe even afterwards. Like, I think we're going to get a lot of Tom Holland movies. And why not? Because they're great. Well, I mean, think about it. like we had we had an RDJ Iron Man for 11 years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like uh, and that just ended. Like, think about if you're Tom Holland. Why would you not like? Yeah, it's not like it's not like you just got cast as Batman in the new DC franchise like that is like you're like, that seems like a dream come true. But if you actually think about it, you're like, mm, I don't know what I really signed up for. But yeah. if you're being handled by Marvel, not DC, it's like, man, your future is set, man. Yeah. And not tons even and money, not just that, tons of not roles. just that you are like you are like the most popular character in yeah. Marvel. It's You're like Spider-Man, dude. I think Tom Holland said it himself. Like you would have to be stupid to turn an opportunity like that down. Yeah. Listen, Tom Holland probably has so much money. I mean, he's wicked talented. But like, think about if you were Tom Holland right now, like even if he quit, he's just he's set. Which yeah, he wouldn't. But oh, yeah. But anyway, far from home specifically, let's uh, let's dive into that a bit because yeah, I would to like to through, talk They're going to have to skip it. through so much <laughs> when we told them <laughs> about the timestamp. That's it's okay. Like, it's 10 That's minutes okay. later. Um, listen, <laughs> Mysterio. Fantastic. So I don't think I liked his his, uh, his explanation all being in one scene. Like it just felt like the, um, the like, aha, here's the exposition. Here's why I'm a bad guy. Let's get it all out in one scene. Like it didn't see See, I actually thought that was really creative because like like you're talking about the scene where they're like in the bar and all these yes. characters are like coming forward and like you see where they're from and all these yes. things like I like it because like I feel like it it worked with his character. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Mysterio up until this point and this is how it is like in the comic books and other interpretations of him, uh, we think that he's something that he's not. And like, that's yeah. his whole shtick. Like he's an illusionist. He's a uh, VFX man. Mm. And he he likes to like put on these shows and paint these facades. Yeah. And then it's revealed that like, no, it's all just fake. And yeah. I think that the way that they had to pull that off is what they did, because people that aren't familiar with the character, I think would have been very confused at that right. point of the movie. You're like, right. <laughs> because because everything up to that point, like you're like, wait, this is all fake. <laughs> like, like, yeah, um, you know, like, I, I guess um, I guess now that I see it that way, it's like I, uh, I I agree with you about because I didn't know who Mysterio was. Like, I had no idea that he was going to be the villain. I knew something was up the second. Yeah, the movie seemed like it was over and there was still like an hour and 20 minutes left. And I was like, OK, yeah. like there's going to be a turn. Like, there's going to be a twist villain. And because of that, I assume so you didn't. Well, it's got to be. So you didn't know. So you didn't, didn't know Mysterio was a villain going into it. I didn't inherently know that he was a villain. But when that scene started, like when he's yeah, like, yeah, let's yeah. go get a drink, I was like, OK, they're going to turn him here. Like when Peter starts to give him Edith, you know, like the defense system, I was like, OK, like, yeah. no, no. Like that's what he's planning for. That's what his plan was all along. Like when this started and then yeah. he revealed himself. I guess what I was saying is like I just didn't like how. It felt ham fisted the way they revealed everything right then and there because I see yeah. it and I see it in the way of like think about those characters. The things that he's saying, like the things that he's announcing, they all already know. You know, like they know that information. They know that this stuff happens. Yeah. So like Yeah. But when he and makes I, it a toast, I get that. it works. I get that. It's a it's a toast scene and I think that you know, in most in most circumstances I do hate scenes like that. Yeah. But I I I still really think that here's the evil plan. Yeah. And but dude, Mysterio just overall as a villain was so good. Jake Gyllenhaal was phenomenal. And dude, the first scene where Spider-Man like goes up against Mysterio with all the illusions and stuff. Oh, so cool. So that is cool. one of my favorite scenes from all of Marvel. Like it's just it such a VFX so masterpiece. Awesome. So cool. Um, yeah, no, I really I think. 
that was cool. I think the elementals were cool. I mean, they just have the effects down. Like, there's never a question of, like, when you watch a Marvel movie, you're going to get amazing yeah. visuals. Like, that's just how it goes. Um, and isn't, I, like, thought all the, I thought all the acting was so great. Like, Tom Holland, Zendaya. Yeah. Um, I, I thought they she's were great MJ. so She's good. my favorite MJ. Listen. Um, she's yeah, so, for sure. Listen, uh, Mary Jane Watson, um, a.k.a. Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst, like, man... She can go shove it because she sucks compared to this movie. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not even her fault. It's the writing in those movies. Yeah. It's not. I'm sorry, Kirsten Dunst. If you're a destination unknown viewer, yeah. I'm sorry for hurting uh, I'm your feelings. Sh- as I'm sure you are. She's the one person who's been disliking all of our videos. I swear. <laughs> But oh my gosh, can we talk? Can we talk about the blip uh, scene where all everybody's coming <laughs> back from the snap? <laughs> well, you talked about you talked about how um, everybody who was in a plane is dead now. Like everybody who was no, flying, yeah, like, they're gonna they came back they're to gonna rematerialize like, ah! in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the implications of the blip are so scary because okay, listen, Brad. Let me take a moment to talk about Brad. For those of you who haven't yeah. seen the movie, if you decided to have it spoiled for you, Brad is like a guy who didn't blip. He he grew up five years, so he'd be 21, I think. If he was 16, yeah. he'd be 21. If he was 17, he'd be 22. Well, he goes on the field trip with them, and he's still into MJ. Well, MJ blipped, so she's like 16. Peter's into <laughs> MJ, and so is Brad. Except Peter's 16, MJ's 16, and Brad is like 22. So, Brad, <laughs> come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be uh, weird? Let, let's let's talk about this hypothetical for a little for for a moment. Like there was this there was a character in the movie that was like, I got blipped. And then when I came back, my younger brother was my older brother. <laughs> it's, like, it's like if that kind of thing happened in real life, do you know how strange that would be? Oh, like your strange. friends would all be like five years older. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, well, like, the one guy talked about Would you about, stop like, hanging out with your friends? Because like, they were older? Well, think about, like, everybody who was married, their spouses, if they didn't get blipped, they probably moved on. Well, the one guy talked about, he's like, my wife pretended to blip and ran off with another <laughs> man. We held a fake funeral for her. Well, it was a real funeral because we thought she was dead. <laughs> That's so horrible. And oh. you know that would happen, too. That yeah. would happen. People would use the blip as, like, he's gone, like, criminals. Like, if they got blipped, or, like, if they didn't get blipped, they could just th- say that they did and start a new life. Like, chaos, yeah. man. Absolute chaos. Yeah. Thanos, I don't know what you were thinking, bro. I don't know. <laughs> the blip wasn't a good idea. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> it, it never would have worked. Thanos was kind of an idiot. Well, also, he destroyed half of everything. Well, which half of all the- life. Plants the whole alive. purpose, the whole purpose of like his conquest was um, that there were finite re- like resources in the universe yeah. and that life was going to destroy itself, essentially, um, by using too many resources. But then when he snaps, he kills half of all living things, which means he kills half the resources. So like he kills half the animals, half the yeah, like, plants, maybe stupid like stupid boy. <laughs> Thanos, what you thinking? What are you <clears throat> thinking, bro? Josh, um, really off topic from what we were talking about now. What is the first video game you ever played? Um, the first video game I ever played was Super Smash Brothers 64. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> that's legacy right there. Do you remember? Yeah, the, dude. Okay, now this is this is way further out. Followed there. by Pokemon Yellow version. Those are great. Do you those remember are, the first character those are my you ever two picked? First games in Super Smash, in Super Smash really, Brothers. Yeah, that's a really highly specific question. So I understand <laughs> I can't answer that. Um, I do remember that the characters that I played the most um, in Super Smash Brothers sixty four were Link and Fox because I Link thought they were Fox. very cool. Okay, mm-hmm. I um, I remember um, my I remember I had that game. And my my dad, he he told me he would help me beat it because I couldn't beat it. And so I showed him the controls and stuff. And he told me like he went downstairs and he's like, all right, listen, he said, the only character I know how to use is Mario. So he said, you can get me to the hand guy with Mario. He said, I'll beat him for you. And I said, OK, well, at the time, I love Pokemon so much. So, like I started playing yeah. the game and I was debating and I was like, all right, fine. 
I said, I'll be Pikachu. So I get all the way there and I get my dad up there and he goes, what did you do? <laughs> I said, what? And he said, I, get, I said, get there with Mario. He said, I can't do this. And I said, we can do it. And I remember having this just wonderful experience where we both sat down and I was like, he was playing the game and I was like cheering him on and we were probably pe- playing on the <laughs> easiest difficulty, but my dad <laughs> beat Master Hand as Pikachu. And I'll never forget that. It was so funny. <laughs> that's such a good, that's such a good memory though. <clears throat> it is. It's. Um, I love that. That's something that I probably would have never thought of. Again, you know, you get these these triggers for memories. First game I ever remember playing was Super Mario World, but the first mm. video game I ever. Oh owned. my gosh! Yeah, so I good, love right? Super Mario World so it's much. It's so polished. It's so cool. Like even now, looking back, it's a great game. There's so many like I Super think it Nintendo. Is... Oh, go ahead. I think it is my favorite Mario Brothers game. Yeah. Like, is it fair like, to call it's it a Mario not Brothers as, game? Luigi isn't in it. I guess that's true. But I mean, yeah. it's it's the same style. Like, it's the 2D platforming, side scrolling, like wonderful experience that we all love in a Mario yeah. game. But even looking back, uh, Super it's just, Mario like, World so is so polished. Good compared to like other games of that era like other super nintendo games like games that weren't mario sucked so much like i just don't <laughs> <laughs> i mean honestly like you like think about yeah. another original nintendo game that had any yeah fun value to it whatsoever like you could still play the original super mario brothers and have fun it's a yeah. challenge it was so cool yeah and i mean i think zelda's always been good yeah um but i would always choose a like at least slightly newer Zelda. Like I wouldn't want to go back and play like the legend of Zelda one. You know what I mean? No, no. Because like the game is just, there are better versions of it. Like you can play some Ocarina of time or you can go newer and play breath of the wild. Like those are both infinitely better choices than the original super Mario brothers. It's like now it holds up. Just play you. It does. But I'm saying you could just play, Super Mario Maker, and you can get the same yeah. sort of experience, but so much diversity and diversification in it. If you want to play some of our Super Mario Maker levels, we have uh, a few. we'll put those codes in the description. I put the codes in the last newsletter too. Did you see that, Josh? <laughs> yeah, I did see that. I thought yeah. that was I thought that was a good addition. Yeah, I thought it would be fun, just in case anybody. Oh, because I'm sure everybody who subscribed. If they love Mario or the Super Mario Sunshine musical that much, they probably own a Switch or some Nintendo console. I don't know. <laughs> you would think so. Hopefully yeah. they uh, they do. Um, but <clears throat> we've been talking for a while, Blake. Do we yeah. want to do we want to land this plane? Is there anything else you wanted to discuss? Anything else I wanted to discuss? Not necessarily other than um, I love Nintendo so much. I have since I was a boy. It's fundamentally th- shaped who I am in my life. <laughs> I think that's obvious that both of us love Nintendo based on what we do on this YouTube channel. I have a Mario Amiibo here. I have a Fox Amiibo here. I've been clutching a Super Mushroom this whole time. Um, I don't think there's any other Nintendo memorabilia in this room. Right? Well, there is, but I'm not going to go seek it out for the purpose yeah, of I've got, flexing. I've got a lot of things I could show off if I got up to get them, but I digress. It's not no. worth it. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for joining us for this episode at this episode of Destination Unknown. We <laughs> will see you next time, and I will take speech lessons from now until then so that I can talk gooder. <laughs> so I can speak good. So I can throw words out of my throat. <laughs> <clears> throat> Goodbye. See you guys.